Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are once again exploring Repeat's Redux category. Uh, we're looking at CODA systems today. And um, uh, when we talk about CODA systems, I'm, I'm going to talk about sort of two different things because uh, sometimes the CODA systems can start the system and other times that you want the CODA system to actually be in the middle of the system. And um, doing them in the middle of the system is a little bit complicated, but uh, I think you probably have this information from the text repeat um, uh, videos, but just to kind of reconfirm so it's all in one place, let me just show you again how to set up uh, a normal CODA system. And this time I'll put the CODA at the beginning of bar 17 here. Uh, so I'm going to go into the repeat tool, and the first thing I'm going to add is the uh, DS signal sign here. And this is a mark, so we choose never mark. Uh, in bar 16, I'm going to choose the uh, um, DS Alcoda symbol here and select that. And we are going back to the DS sign, which is text I repeat ID number 8. And this is an always jump mark, as we know. Uh, and then I'll put the, the coda marking here in bar 17, which is this guy here. And as you know from a previous video, um, the coda marking and the coda text actually have to be two separate things. Now, again, this is a mark. So I will go ahead and create the uh, coda text as well. There we go. Uh, left justified. Um, this is all good. And select that. And again, this is also a mark. And of course, we do have to separate these guys little bit and then the next thing we need is the uh, two coda marking so we'll go back here and let's put that in bar 8 uh, two coda with the uh, pound sign here to replace the pound sign with the um, uh, the uh, the repeat mark in the target so this will be jump on pass 2 as we remember and re text repeat ID 7 because that coda marking is uh, the seventh uh, ID Click OK, and we should have our two coda marking. And just a couple other miscellaneous things we're probably going to want to do. You're probably going to want a double bar line uh, at the DS uh, Alcoda, and likely you're going to want to indent this system. And that would be done with the uh, page layout tool with the edit system margin window here. We can just put a, we'll select the right one, system three, and just put a uh, left margin here of, say, 0 0.5 is a good place to start. And um, now we have that. Um, that CODA system just like that, all right? So that's um, sort of the long way about doing the CODA system at the beginning of a system. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it is, I'm just undoing all of this. We can start fresh. It's a, a little bit more complicated when the CODA system, when the CODA system itself starts in the middle, middle of a system. Uh, actually, it's a lot more complicated. And fortunately for us, um, Finale actually has a plugin that does this all at once. And the way to use this plugin is to select the measure that the coda itself starts in. So in this case, I'm going to say, let's say it starts in bar 21. Um, and this is where we're going to split the, the coda systems, right? So 21 will be the new system. 20 will be the last system of the, uh, the thing before it, uh, it says DSL coda. And there is a plugin for this. And it is under plugins, measures, um, create coda system and this is a great little tool that kind of first of all it does everything that I just showed you before um, but it will also split the system which is uh, which is pretty pretty nifty and there's a few things to this the horizontal space before the coda you can set this however you want but 0.5 is generally a good starting place um, and it will give you a bunch of different things to to do here if you want so you can uh, add a coda symbol, add the coda text. Again, this is going to create two separate items, just like I just showed you. And let's put the a create coda, and we'll say the create coda marking is going to be in bar 8 again. This is great. You just kind of fill this in exactly how you want it. And what is this, a DC or a DS Alcoda? Or you can actually choose none. But in this case, it's a DS Alcoda. And the senyo sign, uh, we'll check that, and we're going to put the senyo sign in bar 5, just as we did before. And this is really all it's to. It's, it's actually kind of a nice little uh, utility. You can you know fill this out as exactly as you need it. And Finale will do everything automatically for you. Just click OK. And you can see that all of those markings get added all at once. And they all have the proper uh, playback functionality. So you don't have to you know worry about any of that. 
Um, you, it also split the system, and it also gave you your double bar at the DSL Coda, and just everything works. It's it's a great little plugin, and I should probably stop here because basically that <laughs> that that's it. That's how you do a mid system uh, Coda. However, if you know me and you know these videos, I'm going to keep going because um, there's there's just some you know background information to all of this, and of course you can actually do this on a uh, a measure that uh, starts a system as well. And the only difference is that it won't actually split the, 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 the system like this. It will just put the CODA symbol in bar 17, for example. It will set up all of the playback function correctly and all that stuff. And it will also put a double bar in bar 16. So it is possible to do this um, not in the middle of a system. However, this, this plugin is almost absolutely necessary to do this uh, if you're doing it mid-system. Now, the really important thing to know about this is what is going on when Finale splits the system like this. Because uh, if you were to try to figure this out on your own, if you're not too familiar with Finale, this would be you know, specifically tricky to kind of figure out what's going on. And actually, long-time Finale users um, I, I've experienced don't really understand what's happening. Um, the truth of, of this is, is that this is actually two separate systems. So you can actually see... And uh, you know, it actually shows you system three and four. The numbering for this, the system numbers are sort of overlapping on the left edge here. Um, but you can actually see that this is uh, system three, values for system three, and this is values from system four. And you may be curious about that because usually Finale doesn't let us, you know, do something like this, except that it does if in the page layout menu. There is an option here called Avoid Margin Collisions. Now, before I had entered this uh, mid-system uh, mid CODA system, um, this was checked. Finale unchecked this in the process of creating that mid-system CODA system. Now, Avoid Margin Collisions. It's important to know that when you create a mid-system CODA system like this, this option is now turned off. And why is it important to know that? Because now, anytime you move systems around your page, Finale will not respect the margin. So I could move system two to the left, and you can see that it, na it now is sort of you know overlapping that page margin. Normally, Finale wouldn't allow you to do that with that option checked. In fact, you could keep going and accidentally end up with a situation where your system is actually dragged off the entire page. It won't respect the margins between the systems themselves either. You can see you can kind of drag that up and have these things overlapping. Um, it, it's you know it, it's just important to know that because 99% of the time you want this option checked. Now the only reason it's unchecked is because this is actually the only way to get these two systems to line up side by side like this. It doesn't look like they're colliding. They're actually not colliding, but technically the way that Finale looks at this. Um, what it's avoiding is the, the top margin and the bottom margin. So if you think about the top margin of system four here is definitely collided past the bottom margin of system three, right? Even, even though there's a, a horizontal gap, the vertical gap, you know, the, obviously the, you know, system four should be below system three, but it's this option being turned off that's, that allows you to do this. And with this turned off, of course, you can move this system anywhere you need to uh, as much as you want. And, of course, it won't respect the system, uh, any of the other margins as well. So that's that could also be a problem. Now, I, I mention all this because you just have to be careful when you have this set up like this. You can indeed go back and check this, and everything will be fine for now. In fact, you can kind of move some of the other systems around, and everything will be good to go. However, um, with this setup like this, as soon as you move one of these two systems, watch what happens, is that it jumps to avoid the collision. Again, they're not actually collision colliding because there's a, um, a horizontal gap here, but again, Finale considers this uh, avoiding the collision in the um, vertical sense here. So it's not allowing System 4 to be uh, you know, above System 3. Um, so... Again, I just mentioned that because when you create these mid-system CODA systems, this option gets turned off. And, you know, it's just important to realize that when you drag these things around, you can sort of accidentally, you know, get these things in the wrong place. So uh, just be, um, you know, painfully aware of that. Now, what you're 
you might be guessing at is that it is possible to create these mid-system CODA systems uh, sort of manually, n now knowing that you can uh, uncheck this avoid margin collisions to do this. The only challenge to that, I would say, is that one thing that Finale does nicely for us with this plugin is that it will um, create these uh, two systems to have the same exact staff spacing, right? So if you were to try to do this manually, uh, you know, what you could do is set up a system with four bars, set up a system with four bars. And if you had some other changes, you know, where the, you know, the staffs were different heights and everything, actually, you can see what's, what happens when I do that here um, is that you'll get some sort of mismatching uh, staffs and, and everything. So you do have to be careful that if you're going to split this manually, um, the values for these uh, system spaces do have to be exact. You can see in this file it's 1.09 on this um, treble clef and 0.91, and you see it matches in the, the fourth system as well. So uh, the last thing you'll notice that now that I'm in the staff tool is that the other thing that it will do is we'll, it will add a staff style um, to the second half of this uh, split system here. And this staff style is actually the, uh, the hide staff name. Um, staff style, which is, uh, you know, telling Finale not to show the, uh, the the staff name in this system. Actually, it's sort of irrelevant in this particular file because I don't have um, I don't have uh, abbreviated staff names uh, on the the staffs after the first one. But if this score had more instruments, you know, five or six instruments, and I had abbreviated staff names, you know, without this staff style, you would also see the whatever the instruments are in the left. Uh, side here, which would be a problem because it would actually kind of uh, run into the end of this um, the other system, which, and that wouldn't be correct anyway. You'd never want to restate the uh, the instrument names in a, in a split coda system like this. So that's the other thing to be aware of is that uh, it does add that staff style, um, which I guess might be important if you do something like, you know, change things around where you have to move measures down, you, you'll notice that now the staff style is applied to these two measures as well. I actually don't understand. I, I feel like the staff style should only apply to this very first measure, but uh, for some reason it, it applies it to all four of these measures. So, um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, that, that, um, that uh, plug-in for the mid-system CODA systems is, is kind of brilliant, and it's, you know, it's, it's a great little plug-in if you're not aware of it, the, the Create CODA system. Uh, oops, you do have to have something uh, selected. And um, yeah, and like I said, you can do it on the, the first bar of a system as well if you need to. And it just, you know, will do all of this without actually splitting the system in the same way. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's uh, Coda Systems in Finale. I highly recommend using the, the plugin uh, in the measures section here, Create Coda System. Um, otherwise, uh, you can try and do it manually if you want. It's a little bit trickier that way, but hopefully uh, you got the idea. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, next, I'm going to do uh, mid-measure repeats. I'll show you how to do that as well. All right. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.